I've talked about this before. I've talked about the difference between whey protein isolate and whey protein concentrate, and I've done videos on that. But I want to take it one step further. I want to talk about grass-fed whey. I want to talk about grass-fed whey protein isolate and why it is so separate and different from other classifications of proteins in general. But first, I want to recap on what I talked about when it comes to whey protein isolate, in case you didn't see that video. So what whey protein isolate is, is it's essentially a purer form of whey protein. Just like the name implies, the protein has been isolated away from the rest of the whey, leading you with ultimately a protein content of 90% or more in a serving of whey protein. Now, additionally with this, you're gonna have less lactose, you're gonna have less cholesterol, you're gonna have less fat. You're ultimately just left with a pure, unadulterated form of protein. Now, this is all fine and dandy, but I mean, sometimes we need that fat. Sometimes we need that cholesterol. So what is the real benefit of whey protein isolate? You see, it comes down to the insulin spike. What happens is when you consume whey protein isolate, you have a pretty significant spike in insulin. And that insulin allows you to shuttle that protein into storage where it can be used to recover, used for what you really need it for. And the more pure the protein and the more easy to absorb the protein is, i.e. without cholesterol, without fat, without byproducts, the higher the insulin spike, therefore the more protein you actually absorb. And you know me, I'm all about bang for the buck. Let's get the most efficiency out of what we spend our money on and the products we put in our body. Now the cool thing is the spike that occurs from whey protein is actually triggered through a different pathway. It's triggered through something called GLP-1 instead of traditional response to glucose, traditional response to sugar where your body secretes insulin. So it's an entirely different pathway that's ruthlessly efficient at getting that protein into the right kind of storage. But where does grass-fed come into this? Where does that even play a part? Well, ordinarily, this is where I would tout the benefits of the omega-3 to omega-6 profile of grass-fed beef. You see, cows that are raised on pasture usually have higher levels of omega-3 fats, which can help counterbalance the high levels of omega-6 fats that are naturally occurring in our body from our diets. See, omega-6 fats, when we consume them, they can trigger what are called interleukin-1, interleukin-6, interleukin-10 antagonists, all stimulated by leukotrienes, which is just a fancy way of saying inflammatory markers that can make it hard for us to absorb our nutrients and can really just make it hard for us to live a healthy, pain-free life. But here's the thing. Unfortunately, when it comes to whey protein isolate, that doesn't really matter because we've already isolated the protein away from the fats. So we're not really getting the omega-3 and omega-6 anyway. So where's the benefit with grass-fed? Well, it comes down to this. And this is, of course, in addition to the fact that pasture-raised beef and pasture-raised cattle are generally more ethically treated, which I stand behind wholeheartedly, but it comes down to the antibiotics and the hormones. You see, a lot of the dairy industry might disagree with me, but when you have cattle that are raised in confined areas, when they're in slaughterhouses or when they're in milk houses or any kind of dairy plants or dairy farms, a lot of times they're so compacted that they have to give them antibiotics to fight off bacteria and disease simply by being in close quarters with each other. Now, when you take pasture-raised beef or pasture-raised cattle, a lot of times that doesn't exist. They don't have to give them as much in the way of antibiotics because there's not as much disease that they have to worry about. But why is this so difficult? Well, it's difficult because that costs a lot of money. You need a lot of land. You need a lot of space. You need a lot more space for each individual cow than you do compared to a typical milk or dairy plant. Now, this does have a trickle effect when it comes into our bodies, and there's a lot of science that's starting to back this up. When we consume a lot of antibiotics, even if it's through the food that we eat, we can start developing an antibiotic resistance. But even more so, it can affect our gut biome. When we affect our gut biome, we are directly affecting the kind of nutrients that we can absorb. If you've ever done a round of antibiotics, a lot of times the doctor will tell you to make sure you take a probiotic and make sure you eat a lot of prebiotic fiber to help stimulate the natural flora within your gut again. Well, what if I told you when you're eating traditional beef or you're eating traditional whey protein powders, a lot of times you're absorbing those same kind of antibiotics, even if it's not in massive quantities. Well, the science is starting to steer that way. It's not conclusive, but it's enough for me to make a decision, that's for sure. Now, another thing you wanna look at is the quality of life with a cow, obviously. You've got the omega-3 balance gonna be much better with that cow, which means protein density is gonna be better, probably just an overall quality of life and higher quality of milk product in general. But again, that could be somewhat theoretical. The one I really wanna focus on is that antibiotic focus. Now, the other thing I want you to pay attention to when you're looking at an overall whey protein supplement or a whey protein isolate is what is it sweetened with? 
You know, is it sweetened with stevia? Is it sweetened with sucralose? Is it sweetened with aspartame? We have to look at these things because what good is going through all the effort to pick a high quality product if it's sweetened with something that's going to counteract all the positive benefit? Now, when you look at sucralose, for instance, sucralose has been shown in multiple studies recently to kill off about 50% of your naturally occurring gut bacteria. That takes us right back to that antibiotic discussion. Killing off the bacteria means you're not absorbing as much. So here's my advice to you. Find a product that contains the right kind of high quality grass-fed whey protein isolate and is sweetened with the right kind of sweetener. Now, I'm not the kind of guy that always endorses products. You don't see me touting sponsorships, you don't see me touting endorsements. But I do like to give shout outs to companies that I think are going the extra mile because I know how expensive it is to find the right kind of pasture raised and pasture finished beef. I know how expensive it is to get a quality product and I know how expensive it is to go through the right kind of FDA guidelines to get the right kind of designation for non-GMO or organic food products. So that's why I did want to give a shout out to Antler Farms who has a nice high quality New Zealand whey protein isolate. And it's sweetened, believe it or not, with stevia. So they've gone the extra mile in a lot of different directions. And again, although I'm not endorsed by them, I like to give shout outs to companies that I think deserve it and actually care about our health. Because when you go to the grocery store and you're picking the food that you're putting in your body, you should be putting that same focus on whatever supplement you're putting in your body. You should be treated the same. As always, keep it locked in on my channel. If you have any questions or comments or ideas on videos, put them down in the comment section below and I'll be sure to answer them. As always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.